such terms as web app, front-end architecture, web 2.0, and HTML5 apps have recently become trendy. Unfortunately these terms are often used in a misleading context which doesn't consider the full specificity of implementation and usage of web app architecture. Today we'll try to find out more about the types of web application and architecture in the light of the latest web trends and key issues that matter to software owners. We'll outline three main types of web architecture and discuss their advantages and drawbacks for three points of view, software owner, software contractor developer and end user. There can be other types but they basically come down to these three as their subtypes. First we'll define a web application, it's a client server application. There is a browser, the client, and a web server. The logic of a web application is distributed among the server and the client. There's a channel for information exchange, and the data is stored mainly on the server. Further details depend on the architecture. Different ones distribute the logic in different ways. It can be placed on the server as well as on the client side. It's near to impossible to evaluate these completely different architectures impartially, but we'll try to using several criteria of evaluation, user responsiveness slash usability, updates of data on pages, switching between pages response time. Such qualities of user interface has richness and intuitiveness in use. Linkability. The ability to save bookmarks and links to various sections of the website. Offline work. Speaks for itself. Developer. Speed of development. Addition of new functional features. Refactoring parallelizing the development process between developers, layout designers, etc. Performance Maximum speed of response from the server with minimum consumption of computation power. Scalability the Ability to increase computation power or disk space under increases in amounts of information and slash or number of users. In case the allocated scalable system is used, one must provide data of consistency, availability and partition tolerance cap theorem. It's also worth noting that the case, when the number of features slash screens of the client APP is increased at the software owner's request, depends on the framework and implementation rather than the type of web architecture. Testability Possibility and easiness of automated unit testing Software owner Functional extendability Adding functionality within minimal time and budget CO Users must be able to find the application through any search engine support expenses on app infrastructure hardware network infrastructure maintenance staff security the software owner must be sure that both business data and information about users are kept secure as the main security criterion we'll consider the possibility of changes in functionality of app behavior on the client side and all associated risks standard dangers are the same for the compared architectures we do not consider security on the server client channel, because all these architectures are equally exposed to break-ins, this channel can be the same. Conversion, site, mobile or desktop application. Possibility to publish the application on mobile markets or to make the desktop application out of it with minimal additional costs. Some of these criteria might seem inaccurate, but the purpose of the article is not to show what's good and what's bad. It's more of a detailed review that shows the possible options of choice. Let's outline three main types of web applications according to the roles performed by the server and the client browser. Type 1, Server Side HTML The most widespread architecture. The server generates HTML content and sends it to the client as a full-fledged HTML page. Sometimes this architecture is called Web 1.0, since it was the first to appear and currently dominates the web responsiveness slash usability, one-fifth. The least optimal value among these architectures. It's so because there is a great amount of data transferred between the server and the client. The user has to wait until the whole page reloads, responding to trivial actions, for example, when only a part of the page needs to be reloaded. UI templates on the client depend directly on the framework supplied on the server Due to the limitations of mobile internet and huge amounts of transferred data, this architecture is hardly applicable in the mobile segment. There are no means of sending instant data updates or changes in real time. If we consider the possibility of real-time updates via generation of ready chunks of content on the server side and updates of the client through Ajax, WebSockets plus design with partial changes of a page, 
We'll go beyond this architecture. Linkability, 5 fifths. The highest of the three, since it's the easiest implementable. It's due to the fact that by default one URL receives particular HTML content on the server. CO, 5 fifths. Rather easily implemented, similarly to the previous criterion, the content is known beforehand. Speed of development, 5 fifths. This is the oldest architecture, so it's possible to choose any server language and framework for particular needs. Such terms as web app, front-end architecture, web 2.0, and HTML5 apps have recently become trendy. Unfortunately these terms are often used in a misleading context which doesn't consider the full specificity of implementation and usage of web app architecture. Today we'll try to find out more about the types of web application and architecture in the light of the latest web trends and key issues that matter to software owners. We'll outline three main types of web architecture and discuss their advantages and drawbacks for three points of view, software owner, software contractor developer and end user. There can be other types but they basically come down to these three as their subtypes.